Um, so today I'm going to be um, just giving a quick demonstration and talk about the the, the work we've been doing within design recently. Um, so we've been working with a number of customers now with Ditta, and um, we've worked with a number of customers who who aren't typical tech pubs um, departments. You know, they're they're, uh, they're 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 companies where we've used Ditta primarily for for uh, enabling them to create some kind of structured authoring environment. So that Ditta doesn't mean anything to them really. It's just the fact that that's what we've used to implement the solution. Um, and these companies. Um, have pretty much all of them have had a teams of designers who are using InDesign to create their outputs. Um, and so when we went to say, well, you can do all of this with XSLFO and you can generate your PDFs automatically, they kind of got a bit worried. That, you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of other people here that have, have kind of witnessed the same sort of thing. You know, they don't want to lose their the people the InDesign the InDesign users don't want to lose their jobs because now there's some kind of automated process. Um, but also, there's there's a lot of benefit in people still using InDesign to publish because they have control over content, and they can do a little bit more with it than perhaps um, uh, you can you can automate through an XSLFO process. Um, so why did we create in why did we create this this plugin in the first place? Um, primarily because the customers still want to use use InDesign and they want um, they want to get XML in. Now. I know that there's already um, plugins available. Um, Nelliot's developed some plugins that generate um, InDesign markup language um, and in copy markup language. Um, we we cho chose not to use those, um, and we we chose instead to to create a form of, of XML that, that the the designers can actually have a little bit more control over and import into the templates that they create. So in a, in a way, it's 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 leaving, it's, it's separating the content from the formatting one stage further until the point where the designer needs to actually start working with the content. So the types of companies that we've we've worked with um, are medical device companies, uh, government departments, um, an examination board in the UK, and there's a hardware manufacturer. So the first three of those aren't your typical tech pubs departments. They're they're, they're companies or organisations that would typically have you know, users of InDesign and DTP type tools. Um, and from the, 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 the last one, although they're using Ditta for tech pubs, the marketing department still want to be able to use InDesign to generate data sheets. So in terms of the plugin itself, um, we've, we've heard um, from, from Radu uh, uh, about the, the CSS plugin that was using the, the, the kind of the first steps of generating a PDF to create this topic merged um, file which pulls together all of your content. Um, so we, we use exactly the same process. We, 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 we rely on that initial stage of the PDF plugin to create an XML file that has everything resolved. And then we apply a whole series of transformations onto that, um, that merged XML to generate the, the InDesign XML that we, uh, that we want to finally bring into, in, in, into, the, into, the, into, into InDesign. Um, in order to do that, we have a mapping file that can map Ditta tags to tags that you want to use in your, your XML file. Um, and we've also defined kind of pseudo functions that you can define in your, XM, in your source XML to provide additional functionality. So I'll just go and show you some of those, um, some of those things. Okay, so, so this is... Um, it is now. This is the uh, um, just the, the the regular flowers uh, Ditter map that, that that ships with oxygen that you can you can look at. Um, and I've done a couple of things to to this content just to illustrate some of the features that we have. Um, so the first one is that we you can see hopefully that we've got this um, with this output class called IDVAR map title. So what we're able to do is is map content within your Ditter within your data topics and then within your data map to variables that can be imported into InDesign. Now that's useful when you want to populate them onto master pages or you may want to populate, populate them into various areas of a, of a page. Um, but a variable could, does not, doesn't necessarily need to be a single, a single uh, phrase like, like, like um, growing flowers. It could be a whole section of content if you wanted to. Um, so there's this control over how you create variables that, that go into your into your topics. Um, 
we have a where is it? A mapping file. Let's zoom this one up a little bit. So this mapping file is is what I was saying. It maps the uh, the data tag. So in this case, the p tag to a style in 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 the XML that we generate. Um, but you can do that. Can you can have conditions on that? So depending on where that paragraph is used, you can have a condition to say when it's in a section. You may want to have a different element name. Um, you have complete control over how you name the tags um, that you want to apply in 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 the content. You can also pull across attributes as well. So there's occasions when there's specific attributes that you may want to make use of. In this case, we're pulling across the status attribute so that we can then apply change bars into InDesign. Um, with a with a, a subsequent script. Same thing with the uh, with the, the title. We've got various conditions that generate different types of title. Uh, for things like lists, we define a, pr uh, a suffix that can say whether it's first, middle, last item. Okay. And as we go through, I'll just show you. There's there's lots of options for mapping various ways of um, different types of table depending on whether you've got different calf table attributes defined. Um, one of the other things we've done is um, right down the bottom, uh, because typically in InDesign, you've, you know, designers are going to use whatever font they want, but quite often those fonts are only, they're not Unicode fonts. So there's, there's always going to be occasions when you've got characters and glyphs that need to be represented still. Um, an example recently was there's a lot of maths characters that were needed but the customer was using a Helvetica Neu font that didn't, you know, was only kind of the lower ASCII kind of characters. So we can also map ranges of Unicode characters to specific uh, tag names as well, so that they can then be mapped. The in in an actual topic, um, I'll just show one example of this. Um, there's an image tag here where we're actually wanting to create a, a, an a ver an image variable. So we can, in this case, we can create a, a thing called spring, spring flower. And so it's creating a variable called spring flower. The resulting XML looks like this. Um, it's a flat structure because InDesign doesn't like white space, or it likes white space and displays all of them. So you need to flatten everything. Um, so you can see that there's no white space between paragraphs. But the variables that we've defined are, um, are all here. So we've got autumn flower, which was the images. And we have um, uh, some spring text. We have some text that we've pulled into variables, and then all of the actual content. So this is the file that then gets imported into InDesign. And I have my template here. This template, I've um, uh, I've I've made associations between those element names. I haven't got time to show in detail what, how to do that, um, but essentially the the tags that are in that XML file I created are then mapped to the various um, design elements in, in the in the InDesign template. And I can then go, go and import that XML file. And it will automatically populate um, the content. So if I scroll through, you can see that it's, it's populated the, the, the main flow of the content. But those image variables and text variables I've created were actually populated into these into these images. And the text variables are then populated into uh, these text boxes here. We can generate the table of contents through InDesign, because InDesign does have a, a table of contents capability. Um, so we can do that. And then when you come to the output side, of course, I could have shown you generating a PDF, or I could have shown you um, what a printed document might look like. But what I thought I'd show instead is the fact that you can then use this, this capability to then create more interactive documents that you may want to deliver through Adobe Digital Publishing solution, um, or through uh, you know, as as a, a an EPUB three um, output. So in this case, we're looking at Adobe Content Viewer, which means uh, which is what Adobe DPS uses, and the, those those snippets of text that we had um, that I tagged, then become um, interactive features within the EPUB that we've created. Um, the table of contents obviously links to the correct place. And the same thing applies if we um, if we look at the document in um, in iBooks uh, as an e as an e EPUB three, we have the same functionality. Um, in this case, we can also pull the table of contents across and use use um, I iBooks uh, table of contents capability, and also have the the interactivity still. 
that was a quick uh, quick demo of it. But there you go. That's that's what we've implemented. Um, any questions? It's a dit sorry, yes, it is a dit toolkit. I didn't have time to actually show the process, but yes, it's a it's an open toolkit plugin that is configurable. Yeah. It's currently not open source. Um, we're 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 currently considering that, yes. Yeah. But go on. <laughs> so so as Mark said, I, I've over the years implemented quite a bit of stuff for getting things into InDesign, but nothing this sophisticated or complete. So I would be happy to throw well not throw my stuff away, but certainly <laughs> advise people to take advantage of this when it was a better fit. Yeah. Okay. Because this is I mean this is very nice. Yeah. So the, the the benefit of this is that we're trying to simplify the data structure for for people. Um, yet still give them the ability to, to to create the markup they need. So you can still wrap sections when you want to, and if you've got a, a section that is perhaps a set of features, you could call it features, and then relate that features tag to a particular features text area on, in your in your template. So it gives you a little bit more control over where where you can tag things, and also gives the designer the the, the ability to tweak their designs, yet still pull in the data content. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.